wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in amma ba'd so Sheikh Fahim asked me to briefly speak about the features of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so when uh, when gathering Shama'i, uh, gathering a hadith and narrations about the physical features of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, basically descriptions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they categorized it under the heading of Shama'il. So if you see books on Shama'il or chapters of hadith under the title of Shama'il, then these are about, about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's physical features. And generally, when we discuss the Prophet ﷺ, uh, we, we tend to bring you all under the broad umbrella of the seerah, right? However, the seerah, when looked at holistically, uh, our tradition has studied the seerah under various headings. Different aspects of the Prophet ﷺ have been, uh, have been studied. The seerah generally tends to be the, the kind of a chronological breakdown of his life, right? But then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's characteristics are studied in terms of his akhlaq, um, his particular characteristics in term, called under the heading of khasa'is. Um, proofs of prophethood is a, is a particularly important... Um, in fact, if Fahimbay gave me a choice, that's what I would have spoken about today, but... Um, proofs of prophethood is a particularly important category under the general heading of, if you like, studying the life of the Prophet Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Um, and by that I mean the the those that part of his life or the narrations about the Prophet Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that can be presented as uh, as proof. I would even say objective proof that he is indeed a true or the true. Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One of the categories is the shama'il. So what I'm going to do, the shama'il, for whatever reason, is very tastefully articulated. I think Sheikh Ibn and Sheikh Abdullah will agree with me that all of the sahaba who who narrated the characteristics of the Prophet, alayhi salatu wa sallam, did it using really rich language. Uh, not your definitely not your everyday Arabic of today, and not even your everyday Arabic of of the past. The language is is very very rich, um, to the extent that in I remember one narration in which one Sahabi is describing the Prophet Ali Salatu Wasallam using these really interesting terms, and another companion from that generation, from that culture, from that society of that language is asking him, so what does this mean? So what does that mean? What does this word mean? What does that? So that was really interesting. But anyway, so what I've done is, rather than go through a hadith or two, um, I thought, how might we describe someone today? Right? If we, if, if, if you saw, if you said, oh, I saw this person and I'm not sure, but I think you know him. And I said, okay, describe that person. You might go in a, perhaps in a particular order, right? So I've tried to, do that. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, um, as described by various Sahaba, so Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu anhu is well known to have uh, many narrations about the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's physical features. Um, Ali radiyallahu anhu has narrations about the Prophet's physical features. Uh, Bara ibn Azib radiallahu anhu has some narrations about the Prophet ali salatu wasalam's physical features and one of the most famous narrations is by Hind ibn Abi Hala radiallahu anhu who uh, famously was asked in that particular narration the chain of transmission says that Hassan ibn Ali radiallahu anhu the Prophet's grandson radiallahu anhu asked him to describe the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and in, in doing so the narrator Describes Hindu ibn Abi Hala radiallahu anhu as a wasaf, as a describer, as somebody who specialized in describing the features of the Prophet. Um, and what's really interesting is some of the biggest details you get from about the Prophet وسلم, physical features is from people who are closest to him. Um, an obvious candidate is Ali radiallahu anhu. Why is Hassan radiallahu anhu asking, asking Hindu ibn Abi Hala? Uh, 
for a description of the Prophet Ali Salatu Wasalam, um, despite the fact that Ali radiallahu anhu is his father. Um, no doubt he asked his father as well. But Hindu ibn Abi Hala had a particular specialism, which is why he describes him as wasaf. The other interesting thing about Hindu ibn Abi Hala radiallahu anhu, which most people don't know that I that I think is an important aspect of, if you like, the sociology of the Prophet's life, is that Hindu ibn Abi Hala is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam stepson. So he isn't somebody who is unfamiliar with the Prophet So how would he be the Prophet's stepson? Can anyone guess? How might he be the Prophet's stepson? Have a guess. Which one of the Prophet's wives had children? Khadija radiallahu anha. Khadija radiallahu anha was married before. She was married to the Prophet and she had children. She had children with her other husbands and one of those children was Hindu ibn Abi Hala radiyallahu anhu. So as such, he was he was part of the household. He frequented the house of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam because it was the house of his mother. And the Prophet alayhi salatu was his, was, was, his, uh, was his stepfather. So anyway, so all of these put together, I've separated different aspects of the description of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. And this is what I have. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam was of moderate height. The wording is to the best of my ability from that hadith, okay? He, he was of moderate height. He did not stand out as tall. If you saw him in a crowd, he didn't stand out as, as you know, as like really lanky and taller than everybody else. Nor did he stand out as short. You know, he was like, he, he was, in, an, in fact, one narration goes into a bit more detail and says he was taller than the medium, the person who you'd describe as medium height but shorter than the person you'd describe as, you might describe as lanky tall. Right? That's basically, he was just above, above average height. Nowadays, I thought about it, and I thought nowadays we'd probably say somewhere between 5'10 and 6 foot, probably. not. doesn't make us Asian people <laughs> feel wonderful, but yeah, yeah, we tend to be below average height anyway. Um, so... In Arabic, you know, they described him as لَيْسَ بِالطَّوِيلِ الْبَائِنْ وَلَا بِالْقَصِيرِ Some ahadith describe him, describe him as رَجُلًا مَرْبُوعًا A moderate-heighted uh, person, uh, and so on. Um, another aspect of the Prophet ﷺ's description is that he was, he was of, of a handsome physique. He, he, he was somebody who you'd describe as he had a good body. Basically, Hassan al Jism. Um, other aspects of his physical appearance, right? Ba'ida ma bain al manki bain. The Prophet ﷺ was broad shouldered. They have a strange Arabic kind of expression of that, that the distance between his shoulders was a lot, basically. Um, and he was, uh, you know, he was well proportioned, mu'tadil al khalq, well proportioned uh, in physique. You know, his limbs all came together nicely. Uh, and he was broad chested. Specific, one of the specific descriptions from a different, these are from different narrations. One of the specific descriptions is that the Prophet was, was uh, broad chested. And he tended, he's, he had a flat stomach, but didn't, wasn't barrel chested, right? So one of the narrations describes him as somebody whose chest and stomach were even. As opposed to somebody with really big pecs. Basically, in those days, he didn't go and do bench press, <laughs> right? That's that, that's the kind of you know naturally well proportioned, naturally built physique. Um, and some some of his you know some of the Sahaba who were from his household, like Ali radiallahu anhu, Hindu ibn Abi radiallahu anhu, describe him as having not being particularly hairy. He had some hair at the top of his chest, and then around his breasts, he was he was bare, he had no hair. He had some hair around his shoulders, around his forearms, and the rest of it, he just had a streak of hair, a line of hair from his chest all the way down to his uh, to his belly button. And the Prophet Ali had long forearms, right? He had long forearms, long forearms, and his limbs were stout. Particularly, 
his joints are described as stout, strong, firm, thick, right? He's described as someone with 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 thick hands, right? Thick ankles. Yeah, these are descriptions of uh, of strength. And again, I am I'm not going to facial features yet. Coming to that, inshallah ta'ala. But you know, some of the things. So I'm trying to start with if somebody was approaching you and you were just looking at them physically, what would you what would stand out? So the Prophet Ali Salatu Wasalam, therefore, a strong, thick hand. You know, he was uh, he he came across as a strong person. Uh, he not if you looked at his face, didn't go into the specific features, you wouldn't say he was plump or chubby cheeked or anything like that. Um, and there was a there was a radiance that, that came out of came out of his face that people found difficult to describe. Some people you know said he it was he radiated like like the full moon you know and so on and they just generally described him as the most beautiful person that they had ever seen and so forth um but in terms of descriptions of his face one of the general descriptions is that he he had a roundish face the prophet ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam had a roundish face so moving on the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh again if you if you saw him at a distance and he was walking uh, the Sahaba described that as someone who walked as though he was walking downhill. Usually people who walk downhill tend to walk, walk very straight and they tend to walk at a brisk pace. So one of the descriptions is that when he left a place, he would go away striding decisively. He always looked as though he was going somewhere. He didn't never appeared as though he was wandering around aimlessly. Right, you know, strolling about aimlessly. It was almost. It was always as though he's left one place. He's going somewhere else. Right. He has an objective. So, and this is how he's described. So uh, he he would tread inclining forward slightly, and he would walk comfortably. But one of the interesting things, though, is that he didn't hunch. And the Sahaba radiallahu anhu ajma'in were well known for not liking that gate, a kind of gate, stooped gate, as though that is some sort of sign of humility. This was the Prophet Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wasn't like that, and he he usually appeared as though he was walking straight on an incline, going down an incline. So that's an that's an important thing. Hunching yourself isn't a sign of uh, humility. I think it was. One of the tabi'iyas, I think, a woman saw a group of men walking around kind of all hunched, uh, appearing humble and meek. And she asked, who are those men? And somebody said, oh, they call themselves the spiritual ones, the, the Sufi types. That, that, that kind of uh, description was given of them. And she said, well, I knew Umar. Radiallahu anhu, and when he walked, he walked straight, and when he hit, it hurt. It hurt, and when he and when he spoke, he could be heard, meaning that, you know, of course we know that the Prophet والسلام, said in a hadith that al mu'minul qawi the strong believer is better than the weak believer, and there is good in everyone. But anyway, so the Prophet والسلام, um, you know, coming back to some more specific features. Uh, his head is described as azim. He had a big head, right? Or, you know, it was, when I say big, not, not generally the moderate features would describe a, a moderate head, but bigger than, you know, if you like, the average, right? Uh, he had loosely curled hair, what you might call wavy hair, right? His wavy sort of curled hair. Um, he kept it long. His hair grew thick and he kept it long. And sometimes it parted by itself. If it parted, according to one hadith, if it parted by itself, he let it stay parted. Right? And um, he grew it. And he would grow it sometimes all the way down to his shoulders. And at other times he would cut it to up to his earlobes. Right? So one, I think, Al-Bara' ibn Azib in one hadith, uh, describes the Prophet ﷺ as somebody whose hair hit his shoulders. And in other hadith, it's mentioned that his hair wouldn't cover his earlobes, implying that he kept it at different lengths at different times, but generally, he grew his hair. 
the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in that particular hadith, you know, Bara ibn Azib radiallahu anhu says, I've never seen anyone endowed with, uh, with locks of hair flowing below the ears, wearing a red suit of clothes, more handsome than Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He had hair touching his shoulders. He was broad-shouldered and he was neither short nor tall. Um, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is described as, in some hadith, as uh, fair compl- with, with a fair compl- com- uh, complexion with a tinge of, uh, of redness. Some hadith seem to describe him as asmar, which is kind of, you know, the typical fair Arab complexion, right? Um, so he was bright colored, uh, broad of forehead, endowed with arched eyebrows. Uh, they were perfectly arched without being uh, joined, uh, without being completely joined. And he had a vein. Uh, his his eyebrows that used to throb if he ever if he ever got angry, right? <laughs> Very specific. It would basically pulsate, and he had a slight curve on the bridge of his nose. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. His beard was thick, right? Um, he was endowed with smooth smooth cheeks, a wide mouth, and he had he had cleft teeth, meaning his teeth weren't entirely packed together, but there was um, in them. Um, other descriptions, so these are some of the specific kind of physical features of the Prophet ﷺ that we know. Some of the other things that those hadith say about the Prophet ﷺ, which are not entirely physical descriptions, but border on how he conducted himself. The Prophet ﷺ, when he turned, he faced people fully. Right? He, he didn't, if somebody called out to him, he didn't turn towards them like that. He, he gave them all of his attention and turned fully towards them. Another thing that I thought was really, really interesting was that the Prophet ﷺ, when he walked, he didn't make a point of being the leader and walking walking ahead of people. He let his companions walk ahead of him, which I think stands to contrast with some models of leadership, even religious leadership. And the Prophet ﷺ, in gatherings, didn't stand out. When people came to see him, they it was difficult to tell who he was because he mingled so well with everyone else. He, he just he just sat with everyone else, didn't occupy an elevated position, wasn't sitting on special rugs and special cushions or anything like that. Didn't it wasn't particularly uh, uh, dressed in an ox- extraordinary way. Didn't wear a crown, a special turban or something like that. He dressed like everybody else, appeared like everybody else, mingled with them so that if a person came to find him, they couldn't pick him out from his companions. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But yet, despite that, when people knew who he was, they were struck with awe. And of course, this is something the Prophet ﷺ himself says he was endowed with. He said, Nusirtu bil ru'bi masira tashahar that I have been divinely endowed with awe from a distance of a month, that if somebody was coming to see me, then even if they were a month's journey away, they would start to feel this nervous tension. Right? The Prophet ﷺ was assisted, was assisted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with awe. So that's a brief uh, description of the Prophet ﷺ. And I'll just end with, with a little anecdote. Uh, people... You know, people often talk about seeing dreams of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. One of my teachers was once talking about it, and he says, "If you," uh, he says that there is a difference of opinion about the hadith that if you see the Prophet, then you have indeed seen him. And some scholars had the opinion. I didn't actually check this, but I'll share it with you. And some scholars are of the opinion that you could that that you you have only seen the Prophet if you have indeed seen the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and you can only know. If you have some understanding of his of his features, of course, the other opinion is that the shaitan can't mimic the Prophet ﷺ in a de- in in a in a dream in any way whatsoever. But I thought I'd just share that as well. Jazakumullah khairan. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala make us true followers of the Prophet wasallam, true followers of the Sunnah. And uh, there are things to follow, of course. You know, we can also try to be physically uh, strong. Uh, as well, and take care of ourselves. In fact, there is a hadith that says Prophet ﷺ, when he passed away, he was still flat stomached.
at the age of 63. Didn't have a bulge. So I'll end with that. Jazakum Allah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.